Now maybe I can start with uh, telling something about my uh, first uh, visit here mm -hmm. one year ago when I came here uh, and I was asked to make a work for this space. I was very much uh, impressed and almost intimidated by the size of this grand hall because it's so uh, yeah, beyond human scale mm -hmm. then it reminded me very much of like some kind of mausoleum. <coughs> you know, it's like a, something eternal or a, yeah, it, it, it represents also power for me. It's a powerful uh, building and I thought is it why did the architect make such a powerful building? Is it a tribute to himself? Or is maybe it, uh, the, the power behind it is the, maybe the, 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 the family or the Grand Duke who financed this, uh, this, this uh, uh, enormous, big, uh, uh, beautiful museum. But uh, that was kind of confusing, I must say. That, uh, and also the, I studied the works of artists that were before me doing something here. And often you, have to f you, you feel that as an artist you have to compete maybe with the size of this space by making something very uh, also big in size and, in, and, and a lot in the sense of material. And I thought actually I, uh, I, uh, I wanted to, uh, to provoke something here. It, it seems so uh, serene and quiet, almost as, as if you were in a church. You know, but we, it didn't feel very democratic in a way as an art museum. And I, especially also with the balcony there, I had the feeling it's like in a church where the, the priest or the pope is speaking to the, to the normal people, you know. So we have the feeling there is some kind of uh, authority or s different in status. And, and then suddenly I, 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 I had to think about this painting of Bruegel. The paintings of Bruegel are very much uh, 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 about uh, uh, human uh, uh, behavior and also the, the, the madness of, of, the, of the world we are living in. At that time may be different, but in the same time um, I, uh, I thought what, what this space needs is some kind of drama, something human, something, uh, yeah, something smelly or uh, something expressive, you know, to break a bit the serenity of the space and to come to a level of, 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 of human uh, scale. So I uh, came up, uh, so I took the painting of Breugel, the, uh, it is the moment between Carnaval and Lent. There is a lot of activities on this painting that I don't understand. There is a lot of symbolism of carnival, of festivities, but also of religion. And uh, you see the human uh, behavior and, and physical uh, state in different situations. You see uh, mutilated characters. You see the best and the worst of, of, of human behavior, actually. And uh, I thought, actually, Luxembourg, uh, the Netherlands, uh, uh, Belgium, if you go back in time, there is a lot of uh, uh, roots in, uh, in folk uh, tradition, you know, of uh, maybe going back before Christianity. And I found it interesting to refer in a way to, to Carnaval. That was one of the starting points. The second one was the, sp the, the size of, I mean, uh, I wanted to make obviously a sculptural installation. And I, I knew that, uh, I, I started with uh, some characters in my studio, because usually I, I work on human scale because I like to refer also to theater or that the, the audience is in a way a witness of some kind of event. And I knew in this space you need to, uh, yeah, it, it, you need a size in between the human scale and the grotesque uh, size of this hole. And I came up with uh, characters around a, a bigger than human scale. But uh, on the other hand, if I see it in this space, it's not that, that big. It still reminds you of the human size, you know. And, uh, and I also knew that I needed a certain amount of characters to create an, uh, a scenery or a scene. And, uh, and I thought actually it should be some kind of arena, like a, a playground or a theatrical stage where something would take place and maybe the, the, the Grand Duke would watch from his balcony and he would decide if it would be satisfying for him or not. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I, uh, in this idea of theater and uh, uh, representation of something theatrical, I was thinking about theatrical uh, figures. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm fascinated by the character of Klaus Kinski. I found it very interesting that uh, 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 actors like him 
or, or, or also acting in general uh, is about entertainment also, you know. But some actors, they go beyond that. They take you, they transport you, and uh, they can provoke something much deeper than just to, to perform a, a theatrical play. And, uh, and I thought there is something in the physical appearance also of some very strong actors like him that, uh, yeah, that, 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 that speak to me. So I tried to, uh, I made these portraits of these characters from uh, of, of my interest uh, out of uh, out of out of clay. I made it out of clay first, the portraits, and then I make silicone rubber molds. And in these silicone rubber molds, I put in these kind of uh, toxic chemical materials that are uh, that I use already for many years. Uh, it, these materials are industrial uh, materials made to insulate buildings, or they are inside of ref uh, refrigerators, for example. They're they're meant to be. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I'm very careful. But uh, what, what I found fascinating about this material, it's, uh, uh, it's very economical. Because it, uh, when you start to work with these chemicals and you mix them together, you get a chemical reaction and it expands. So it multiplies itself. But in daily life, we don't notice these kind of materials, uh, but they are present everywhere in our house, in our households, in our, the buildings that we live in. So I found it interesting also conceptually that, that the world that we actually perceive as our reality, there is something maybe hidden behind it. There is a, a strategy behind it or a psychological uh, sales, uh, 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 say that, marketing strategy. So I found it, uh, for me, entertainment industry, marketing, uh, uh, commercials, it's all part of this kind of uh, uh, reality that is created by mass consumption society or motives. So for me it was interesting to, to combine it also in this project to, to bring in these uh, very non-artistic materials. You know? Now I, I took also as a starting point for example the actress Cicciolina, the porn actress from Italy. And uh, sorry? And also a potential politician, yeah. But I found it interesting that that, uh, that there is uh, um, in entertainment there is also some, some element of perversion, you know, that we would like to see the, the uh, other human beings in a different state and, and that we can watch at this like some kind of enjoyment or... Uh, or uh, so there is an element of perversion, it's also what you see in Bruegel, that it's going... Yeah, that it is a bit uh, perverse, I think, uh, in some way. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very much dealing with quite un un unrevealing actually the truth behind things, but in the same time also, my work is very uh, figurative, people recognize things. So it's also using these kind of psychological uh, techniques to, in a way to trigger the attention. So I use bright colors, but in the same time, people are very unfamiliar with this material. So there is a moment of attraction, maybe because of the visual aspects, the colors, the characters, the, the gestures. And when you come closer, you realize that there is something strange in the material or un unfriendly maybe in the subject. And I found it interesting to, to work with these kind of opposites of the attraction and the, the repulsion of... Uh, so. Uh, yeah, in the, recently I started to experiment more with the graffiti uh, paint, with out of a spray can, with, which allow me to enhance really the the the, the colors, mm -hmm. and also to uh, to make it even more, uh, yeah, the, the the visual layer more thinner in a way. Mm -hmm. So I decided so to paint. Still see the material. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I only painted the front sides of these uh, characters because I also want to unreveal the truth behind it, you know. Yeah, to take it off and uh, what you see as well are some elements of uh, traditional uh, sculptures, like from the ancient Greeks. <laughs> because uh, I, uh, on my old art school, there are these plaster models of uh, Greek gods, uh, like Hercules and the uh, horse riding statue. And I collected over the years, uh, I, I made moulage or the molds from these sculptures. And I use them in these works. Uh, for example, uh, in, the in the work behind you, you see the horse head, it's from a plaster cast. Okay. And the, the, the arms are actually the legs of an anatomical man. Okay. You see the feet and the muscles, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's this kind of uh, example of academism, uh, how art should, how an artist should learn how to master the, 
you know, the tradition. And uh, it's very difficult to work with these materials because I order them from a factory, so they come in in liquids in containers. And once you mix the two compounds, I have only 30 seconds to uh, to, uh, to, okay. to give them a direction. Mm -hmm. So there is often uh, ah, there is okay. an element of imperfection. Yeah? Ah, okay. It's more the, the the nature of the material. It, it doesn't want to be in an art context because normally uh, they it's use it in the industry. Yeah. yeah. So I have to within this short time frame, it allows me that moment to to act. You know. So that's why. It has these kind of rough edges or drippy effects, effects because uh, yeah, I think I see that the, 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 the museum is also a stage, you know, but because when people, I'm interested in the choreography of how people walk through a museum, for example, or what kind of state of mind they are in when they are going to watch, look at art. Once you step in a museum, you, you go into a sort of mindset where you use your the, the knowledge and the vocabulary you have about art to watch, to look at art. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, this is very much according to some kind of rules, I think, how we supposed to look at art or how we should interpret the symbols or... And uh, yeah, for me it's interesting in a way to play with this uh, uh, mindset of the audience, how they enter something and also to, uh, to work with the element of surprise. You know, to, uh, to maybe to shock for one moment, to have an ele a moment of of, uh, of attention, yeah, and then to pull people with me down into the into the deepness, into the darkness, you know, because I think it's often in a museum that you have a respectable distance towards an artwork, but I think it's interesting when when there is an, uh, a moment of uh, a shock or an emotion mm -hmm. that suddenly uh, you have access in a way to somebody's. Uh, 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 Too close for comfort. Yeah, it, I can have maybe uh, as a film director a short moment of influence on people, you know, to implant something in their mind and maybe to, uh, yeah, to trigger uh, something that is uh, in, inside of them. Or, uh, and I, that, that I found it interesting, these kind of same techniques that maybe they use on television to, uh, yeah, to, to, to make you uh, remember a brand name, for example, like to, to repeat something. Or uh, I found it interesting that these materials are actually coming from mass production, uh, mass consumption uh, industry. Uh, but you're that. not supposed to, uh, exp yeah, you're not supposed to experience that in an art museum, I think. But I found it interesting in a way also to, to, to question the position of the artist and also the function of the museum, you know. I mean, uh, what is the relationship between what's going on in a museum and the reality outside? Or is, is, is what's happening in the museum a reflection of the reality? But it is really hard, I think, for an artist to, to get a real emotion, you know, or to, to get a reaction more than just an appreciation, you know. So uh, that's why I want people to enter, to walk through and to interact in a way, to become also a witness, or maybe uh, uh, to become part of the of this game that, that, that that's going on. I want them to intimidate. <laughs> I want them to that you feel a bit small. Mm -hmm. You already feel smaller because of the space, mm -hmm. but maybe also the the, gro the element of the grotesque or maybe something humoristic can also bring you again above the subject, you know, and relativate maybe the 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 weight of of art or of history so in that sense i try to make things lighter or uh, more digestible you know usually i'm very uh, strict about the uh, the symbol symbols in my work and also the references but uh, recently i have uh, uh, done a theater project mm -hmm. with a new york uh, theater company they asked me to do costumes and a stage set mm -hmm. and it was all it was a shakespeare play but it was set in a Native American context, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of uh, experimental. And they were collaborating with the Royal Shakespeare Company in England. And uh, I, I, this uh, theater production uh, did something to my, uh, did something to me, in the sense that I wanted to liberate myself also from certain conventions. And um, so there's no specific meaning to that. Uh, yeah, but in the same. I think it comes back. Quite a yeah. There is Benjamin Franklin yeah. here. I don't know. For some reason, before in my work, I was I was using that more specific. But I think also we are so much uh, surrounded and influenced by cliche imagery mm -hmm. 
that at some point it doesn't matter anymore, you know. So it is maybe populistic in that sense, but it's also maybe balancing out the, uh, I don't know, it's maybe also something about li liberating yourself, you know. If you wear cowboy boots nowadays, it has also something to do with out that you're an outlaw, you know. You don't want to conform yourself to uh, what, whatever, you know, to fashion, yeah, yeah. It is out of fashion. So I found it in that sense interesting that it's maybe a very strong cliche image about the cowboy, about the outlaw. But in that sense, I think if you look at Bruegel's paintings, it's also so much over the top in some way that I think, uh, yeah, I found it appropriate here to, to make it also uh, flat in some way. I use all my uh, abilities to, uh, to give certain gestures to the characters, or, but it's interesting in a way to, to create a vocabulary where all the aspects from the most populistic and flat thing to the most uh, conceptual and maybe deeper layered elements are combined. But I, I try to, to combine everything, you know, also the material in all its aspects. That's the great thing about these kind of liquid uh, high-tech chemicals. It's the, it's the cliche or the, 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 the recognition that I need. You know, the, the moment of uh, fun, oh, it almost looks like a real guitar. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly you get behind it and you realize it's just a reflection of that, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, there's something behind it that it's... But I like to, to make it easy for people to, to recognize that or to... Uh, because the material, as you can see here, for example, if I uh, fill up the mold with this material, it, the mold is are often e e expanding. Yeah, so it's, the, it's very imperfect, you know. And I think also for me as an artist, uh, the idea of rep reproduction, you know, is also a reference, for example, to the, yeah, artists have always been aware of uh, marketing also, you know, like Rodin thinking, okay, I make uh, not one uh, uh, Balzac, but I make 10 of it, you know, if there is more demand, I make more, more. Uh. So for me, it's also very much about art history and the, the position of the artist in, yeah, how, how can you manipulate in a way the the viewer or uh, yeah and I think marketing and economy is a so is a part of that you know plans. sorry so you can make many more link plans, I can make many more but the the molds are uh, the, it, it is an imperfect process so uh, that's why you see so many uh, imperfections you know.